Yu-Gi-Oh! An incredibly complex card game with tens of thousands of cards. However, what if each set was separated from the rest of the massive card pool and your choices when building a deck were extremely limited? In this series, in order to learn Yu-Gi-Oh! from the ground up, I will be embarking on an adventure through the history of the card game with Jeeks. In each episode, we will have access to all the cards in a select product, and using only the cards in that product, both of us will build a deck before playing a best of three match to determine the winner of the episode. We will move in a chronological order in the series, and with each new episode, we will forget the cards of the past in order to experience something brand new. We hope you enjoy this adventure through Yu-Gi-Oh! and its evolution with us. Welcome to the historic Yu-Gi-Oh! learning journey. Ladies and fellas, welcome to another episode of the History Yu-Gi-Oh! Learning Journey, and it is time for the finale of GX. So, Light of Destruction is what we are doing today, and that is the final set before we enter Duelist Genesis, which is the first set of five Ds. So, I don't think we really were hallmarking the end of a duel original Duel Monsters too much. We were more like super excited to get into GX. And uh, yeah, finally that is coming to an end. It feels like it's, this has gotten so fast. Like it feels like already entering the Synchro era feels so weird and crazy, but yeah, very interesting stuff. But as always, uh, let's take a look at what we're dealing with with Light of Destruction. So, as you can probably guess from the name, it focuses on a light monster. So, contrary to Phantom Darkness. Uh, right the bat, Guardian of Order, a level eight special summonable uh, light with 2500 attack. If you have two or more light monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, but you can only control one. Very accessible, very good, swarming. It's just a really solid card, honestly. Uh, honest, a very uh, notorious hand trap. Uh, also has 1900 defense on the field, which is quite actually big. And during your main phase, you can main phase you can return it from the field to your hand if it's face up. And during the damage step, when a light monster you control battles, you can, as a quick effect, send this card from your hand to a grave, and your battling monster gains attack equal to the attack of the opponent's monster. So basically, as long as two things are attacking, you're always winning the uh, attack, and your opponent takes damage equal to your own monster's attack, is essentially how this works. Then we have some uh, Neospatian support, uh, Destiny did Dread Servant here for Clock Tower Prison, so for some uh, Destiny Hero shenanigans, then you have Jinzo Returner and Jinzo Lord for Jinzo support and also giving us access to Jinzo due to the name drop. And then we have one of the absolute worst archetypes in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Arcana Force. So Arcana Force are a list of cards where when you summon them, they you flip a coin and you get either you get one or the other effect usually it tends to be heads is a good effect and tails is a bad effect for you so uh i'll just uh, talk about their flip effects and then the head sorry the coin flip effects and then head and tail when as we go through them so full is interesting in it can be destroyed by paddle and it cannot be changed to defense with a card effect and when summoned you toss a coin and gain the appropriate effect so that this when this card is summoned toss a coin and get the appropriate effect, effect uh, is what applies to all of them so heads flip you negate the card if your own card effects to target the card and destroy them and tails you negate your opponent so this is a case where the tails is actually the positive that is actually you one of the best Arcana Force cards, but most of these are very bad. Also, uh, Arcana Force won 11 11 stat line. Uh, as for the others, like it's always basically you just add whatever they are uh, as a number, you add that as a stat as hundreds and then a thousand. So three is 1300, six is 1600 that way. So, Magician uh, Heads Effect when a spell is activated, you double the Magician's original attack until the end phase and tails your opponent gains life points every time a spell is activated for empress uh the heads effect each time you normal summon or set a monster you can spell summon an arcana monster from your hand and tails each time your opponent normal summons or sets a monster you send a card from your hand to graveyard <laughs> yeah now you see what we're dealing with here uh the emperor heads simple or arcana force monster you control gain 500 and tails all of them lose 500 for the level lovers Heads, 
this card can be treated as two tribute summons for the summon tribute summon of an arcana monster and tails you cannot tribute summon arcana force monsters chariot on heads, when you destroy an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon that monster to your side of the field. And tails, your opponent immediately just gains control. Temperance is a tribute to some monster, but it's a little bit different, where you also have a hand effect, where during damage calculus, either play a student, you can discard this card to take no battle damage from the battle. Uh, on, a, on field, the heads effect has all battle damage you take, and tails, all the battle damage your opponent takes. The moon heads during your standby phase gives you tokens, and tails during your end phase you select the monster you control and give it to your opponent. Basically, if you get that, you would obviously want to give them the moon so they then give it back to you. But obviously, they can use this as material for anything. And then Zawardo, Arcana Force Twenty One, the world. Basically, the only actual good Arcana Force uh, card where it's played. In the world tur turbo, it's not played in an arcana force. If I basically uh, doing your end phase, you can send two months that you control the graveyard to skip your opponent's next turn. Obviously, an absolutely insane effect. Tails during your opponent's draw phase, you add the top card of the graveyard to your hand. But basically, in the world uh, turbo, you always want to get the heads, and you're basically just skipping all of your opponent's turns. Then you have a uh, the Dark Ruler, a level 10, 4,000 attack and defense. Uh, must be spell summoned by sending three monsters you control to the graveyard and cannot be spell summoned by other ways. And then it also has a toss, coin toss effect where if you toss heads, you can attack twice with it. Uh, during a battle, battle phase, but you change it to defense position at the end of the battle phase and then it can't be changed. So really big uh, goblin attack force and tails where if this card is destroyed, you destroy all cards on the field. Uh, it's a bad archetype. I don't even know why I covered all of them. I just think it's interesting enough and different enough, but it is a terrible archetype. What is not terrible though, and what is one of the archetypes that I've been looking forward to playing the most is the Lightsworn archetype. Basically, Lightsworn are a group of cards where you can justify playing 60 cards because most of them have effects where during your end phase, you send cards from your uh, deck to the graveyard from the top of your deck. We will refer to this as milling. And uh, they also have effects that relate to the graveyard. So we'll just go through them in order. So Jane, 1800, and when it attacks an opponent's monster, it also gains 300 during the damage tip only, and once per turn. This is what I'll uh, call the Light Swarm Mill effect. Light Swarm Mill effect, Jane sends two to the grave. Light of Light Swarm, Sorcerer, 1700. You can target a spell drop your opponent controls and you essentially pop it, but also Lila gets sw swapped from attack to defense, and you can't change it back until the end of your next turn. And it's Light Swarm Mill is three cards. And Gareth Light Warrior, 1850. Each time a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard by the effect of a Light Swarm monster, except Gareth itself, you mill two additional cards and then draw each one for each Light Swarm monster sent to the graveyard. Lumina. 8,000, 1,000, yeah. once per turn you can discard a card to target a level 4 or lower life from monster in your grave to special summon it, and the, its mill effect is 3. Raiko is a flip monster that applies to of these simultaneously. So this is one of the cards that was splashed into basically everything, where on flip you destroy a card in the field and then mill the top 3 of your graveyard. No maintenance cost on this one during the end phase, but obviously just basically being a... Uh, Better uh, many eater box since you can pop anything and not just monsters. And then also milling your deck is makes it very good. Wolf cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned by a card effect. And if it's sent from the art deck directly to the graveyard, you special summon it. So this is just a way, this is basically a garnet. You don't want to draw it into your hand. You want to send it with one of your light spawn effects into the grave and you get a free 2100 body. Celestia is a tribute summon that's a level five. 2300 attack and when you tribute summon this card by tributing a light swarm monster you can send the top four cards of your deck to your graveyard and then target up two cards your opponent controls and destroy them so very good pop effect uh gregoneth another tribute summon uh 2000 attack and it gains 300 attack and defense for each light swarm monster with a different name in your grave and also inflicts piercing and it sends to the it's a three in its maintenance cost. And then the big boss monster of the Light Swan archetype, Judgment Dragon. So 3000 attack, very hefty. Kind of be normal summoned a sect, must be a special summoned from your hand by having four or more Light Swan monsters with different names in your graveyard. So kind of like 
an equivalent to uh, Dad, Dark Arm Dragon. And you can pay a thousand to destroy all the cards on the field. And once per turn during your end phase, you have the Light Sworn Mill Effect 4 of 4. Then you have some Gemini's Dark Valkyrie. Yeah, we won't cover everything. We have some frogs. Substitute a pretty notorious card. You can tribute a monster to spell some other frog monster from a deck, except blah, 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 blah. And it's also a battle immune and a 2k wall, which makes it pretty interesting. Then we have some battery man stuff, another goblin uh, card. Go to Ladybug for a very gimmicky. Uh, What's his face? Very gimmicky life gains. Lady in White is a level three with, tw which is a twenty two hundred wall that protects uh, zombie monsters, but mostly just there to be a wall. Then we have some Claudian support, and then we have three fusions for existing archetypes. So Destiny Andrew Good for Destiny Heroes, a fusion summon of Plasma and Dogma, three thousand attack and defense, and once per turn you can target a monster your opponent controls and you pop it. And if it was a face up, you also burn your opponent equal to its attack. So basically a wingman esque effect. And then you can conduct your battle phase. The turn you activate this effect. And then during your standby phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish a destiny or guard from your grave to special summon it back. Obviously, it has to be properly summoned for that to apply, but that applies to everything. Then we have Ultimate Ancient Gear Growling, a 4400 attack monster. Absolutely massive. And it's a fusion of Ancient Golem and two additional Ancient Gear Monsters. And it inflicts piercing and has the uh, Ancient Gear Golem -esque, or Ancient Gear esque effect where your opponent cannot activate ba back row until the end of the damage step when attacking. And if it's destroyed, you can target an Ancient Gear Goblin in the graveyard and you ignore summoning condition spell summon it back. Geyseris uh, gives us access to Bestiary, but also is. A summon a, a fusion summon of beast theory and <clears throat> another glad beast. Once again, has the gladiator beast uh, contact fusion. And when it's special summoned, you can target up to two of any cards in the field to pop them, and then it can also do this shuffling. But it cannot summon a beast theory. Then we have some more Neos Patient and Hero support as well. I don't want to dwell on this too long because we have already gone way past 10 minutes, which is what I tend to aim at. Cup of Ace is a uh, pot of greed, if you're lucky, and it's a plus two for your opponent and a dead spell card for you, if you're unlucky. Light Barrier is basically the training wheels for Arcana Force. And then we have some actually re probably relevant cards that we will most likely see. Solar Recharge, you discharge... Uh, di discharge? Uh, I guess because discard and recharge. You discard a light swarm monster, draw two, and then you uh, mail the top two. Realm of Light, the fell spell for light swarms. Each time a card is sent from your deck to the graveyard, you place a sign counter on the card. A light swarm monster gain 100 attack for each shine counter. And if it would be destroyed by card effect, you can instead remove two shine counters for all of the destructive instances. Then you have uh, level tuning, which is here a uh, set early. Because we don't really care about that yet. Golden bamboo, bamboo Sword. If you have Bamboo Sword, which is just an equip that gives the equipped monster a zero attack. It's a part of greed. So, pretty interesting stuff. Once again, more Hero, Crystal Beast, and your Spatial stuff. Then we have stuff for Arcana Force. Uh, Light Spiral is some gimmicky Vanish Milling for... Light Sword. Glorious Illusion is essentially a Call of the Haunted for... Light Swoon, which also has the end phase Light Swoon. Uh, maintenance cost, Destruction ja Jammer, uh, you discard a card, it's a counter trap where you can then negate the activation of Spell Trap or an effect monster phase that specifically destroys a monster on the field and destroy it. Then we have some uh, Glad Beast support, more like contesting shenanigans summon limit where neither player can summon more than two times per turn. And then we have some more uh, Light Swoon here, so Arcus has a maintenance cost since top two, and uh, it protects lights from monsters everywhere with from card effect targeting. And Aaron, a level four lights for uh, maintenance cost of three mils. And if it attacks a defense position monster before damage calculation, you shuffle the monster into deck. So extremely good against uh, defensive uh, monsters. Sorry, my. I, my brain blank there for a moment. Nimble Musa, Musasabi, uh, basically like Mamonga and uh, uh, 
What was the uh, a germ? A giant germ. Where when is destroyed by battle at the graveyard? You inflict 500 damage to your opponent, and then you can also spell some up to do nimble Musasabi from your deck to your opponent's side of the field in attack position. So instead of uh, what's it? What is it? Instead of summoning them to your side of the field, you instead summon them to your opponents, and it cannot be used as a tribute for a tribute summon. Then the last few cards we have uh, Trollatine, Ishark, and Angel. So we have some like big light boss monsters. Angel pro prevents monster effects. Trollatine basically can be spell summon from your hand or during your opponent's foul phase if you had at least two monsters and your opponent destroyed them. And then it chooses an attribute and pops all face monsters with the attribute, which obviously in this set is quite devastating, since it also prevents your opponent from all special monsters with that attribute. But obviously, if you declare light, it's gonna pop itself as well. Uh, Isark is just a one tribute monster with 2300 attack that banishes the monsters it destroys by battle. Oh, yeah, uh, Vanquish and Light, uh, when a monster would be summoned, you can tribute the lights one to negate the summon and destroy the monster. And we have more like. Uh, macrocosmos support luckily it doesn't mention macrocosmos by name because it would be pretty uh, messed up to have a light sworn set where oh well both of us are probably playing some sort of light sworn strategy and everything would be just going to a banish so uh final relevant card probably fossil dina pachipala Pas Pachycephalo? Pachycephalo? I'm just gonna go with that. Where if it's flip fade up, you destroy all spells and monsters on the field, and neither plane can special summon monsters. Obviously, something that's very powerful in modern Yu Gi Oh! But even here, like you have stuff like Lumina, Wolves, stuff that you can spell summon. So even like against fusions, it might be pretty powerful. But yeah. So that is Light of Destruction, sorry for the very lengthy uh, set breakdown, just a lot of cards to talk about, since I also wanted to talk about Arcana Force. But hopefully you enjoyed the set breakdown, and uh, hopefully you enjoy the final episode of GX. So I will see you all in the uh, deck building section next. Okay, hello. How are you doing? This is gonna be a uh, shit show probably, but we're gonna try our hardest. So Light of Destruction is the final set of... GX. It's gonna contain arguably the second, if not the best archetype out of GX, which never appeared in the anime, of course, because why, why would it? But it's Lightsworn. Lightsworn is a very versatile archetype that we will probably be seeing a lot of in the future based off the fact that we're gonna be adding the legacy rule to this. So eventually, once we get more Lightsworn support, there's like a 100% chance that we're going to be playing Raikou, that we're going to be playing Charge of Light Brigade, we're going to be playing anything that lets us play those cards. But yeah, uh, so let's start off with talking about Dogma. Dogma is something that we've seen before. He's shit. He's a big monster, can't be special, monster be a three, including at least one Destiny hero. Kind of awful. Not very good. Moving on, then we have Destiny hero Plasma. This is in Plasma's first printing, right? I'm pretty sure this is in. I think the reason why we have access to him is because of a uh... wait what that's there's no way that's right i mean i guess it is well is this is the first time we get access to plasma holy shit i did not realize that uh but yeah plasma is the better destiny hero boss monster it cannot be normal summoned or set but it must be special summoned by attributing three monsters not including a Destiny Hero monster. You can special summon it using any three monsters. Now, important note here. Scapegoat tokens cannot be tributed for a tribute summon. But they can be tributed for tributing. Which means that you can tribute them for Plasma. So, Plasma has the effect of negate the effects of face-up monsters while your opponent controls them. So, it's basically a one-sided skill drain. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls and equip that target to this card. Gain attack. This card gains attack equal to the half of the original attack of the monster equipped to this card by this effect. That's pretty good against Light Swarms, because we have a lot of big, beefy monsters. And then there's also the fact that uh, you can steal stuff like Judgment Dragon. So, if your opponent, for some reason decides to drop their Judgment Dragon to try to swing into this, you, you can probably protect yourself using something like uh, nothing actually. I don't think there's any kind of uh, protection in this, but whatever, don't worry about it. But yes, Plasma is going to be the wing con main wing con for this, and we're going to be facilitating it using a lot of 
shit cards. Uh, Fossil Dyna, which is a anti-meta staple, or it was an anti-meta staple back in like 2018, give or take, where people, and even before that, like this card has had play since its printing. People play, have played this card for like 15 years, give or take. Whenever I, like, whenever I see an anti-meta deck from mid mid 2010s, it has one of these at least, and that's because it has the effect of if this card is filled face up, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. Neither player can special summon monsters. So that first effect, pretty good. Second effect, fucking ace. Like, Vanity's Emptiness is a super good card, and having access to it in any regard is very good. The biggest problem is usually protecting this thing, because it's super small and it's super dinky, it doesn't do much. So your opponent can usually just summon Stratos and swing into it, but you know, it's still a fairly powerful card, and it can fuck your opponent over. Uh, then we have Honest, which is this, like, set's cover card. It's a... I think this is the first time that we're playing hand traps, actually. Like, proper, proper hand traps in the main deck. It has the effect of, well, I guess it's a combat trick more than a hand trap, but still. Uh, during your main phase, you can return this face up card from the field to the good hand. Okay, it's pretty good. Uh, and has a 1.9k defense, which means that you can use it to wall basically everything that isn't like a tribute monster or a wolf or a jank. Uh, but it has the actual effect of like the, the thing you'll use it for. During, during the damage step, when a light monster you control battles, quick effect, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. That monster gains attack equal to the attack of the mo opponent's monster it is battling until the end of their, until the end of this turn. So basically, uh, your opponent swings into your Raiko with the Judgment Dragon, and you're like, I'm gonna drop this Honest here, and then the Raiko gains the attack of the Judgment Dragon, and the Judgment Dragon dies with this little furball. It's really good, really strong. It makes fighting light monsters in this set scary as shit. Then we have Jane, the Light Swarm Palette. Uh, it has the effect of if this card attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 300 attack during the damage step only. And once per turn, during your end phase, send the top two cards from your deck to your graveyard. This is the Light Swarm effect where they mill themselves to set up shit in the graveyard. It's a really fun effect. that It kind of facilitates 60 card decks too. So. Uh, then we have Lumina, which has, which has the effect of once per turn, you can discard one card, then target one level 4 lower light swarm monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Then at, in the end phase, you can mill, uh, you mill three cards. Again, facilitating graveyard play. We're facilitating uh, Reanimator. Lila. Lila has the effect of you can target one spell trap monster, but a uh, spell trap your opponent controls. This card's battle position cannot be changed until the end of the next turn of your next turn. And also change this card you control from face-up attack position to face-up defense position. And if you do, destroy that target. Once per turn during your end phase, send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Then we have Nimple Musasabi. When this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, inflict 500 damage. You can also special summon up to two Nimble Musasabi from your deck to your opponent's side of the field. In face-up attack position, this card cannot be attributed for a tribute summon. Okay. Raiko. Raiko is a... Honestly, as long as we're gonna have Light Sworn support, we're gonna have Raikos, like I was saying. Because Raiko is a really good like single target removal tool, sets up graveyard, like it can do a lot of things. It has the effect of apply these effects simultaneously. Destroy one card on the field and send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. So you pop one and then and also mill through. Uh, then we have Substitute. Substitute is a 2k wall. You can tribute one, uh, one, you can tribute one monster to special summon frog, one frog monster from your deck, except frog the gem. Frog monsters, except frog the gem, cannot be destroyed by battle. Uh, this card is pretty good, but it's mostly just here for 2k wall. Like, it's, it's supposed to wall everything that isn't Jane or Wolf or Judgment Dragon. Uh, then we have Lady in White, which is meant to wall everything that isn't Judgment Dragon or a, Power boosted wolf, I guess. Uh, Lady in White has the effect of face up level 3 or lower zombie monsters you control, except Lady in White cannot be destroyed by battle. Also, they are unaffected by spell trap card effects. Uh, spell trap effects. Wait. They are unaffected by spell trap cards. Okay. And effects. There it is. I'm so fucking bad at reading right now. This card's name becomes Spall Skull Servant while it is in the graveyard. There we go. It's a pretty good card, 2k wall, 2.2k wall. It has uh, synergy with Skull Servant, synergy with King of Skull Servants. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, then we have Tualatin. This card is in here specifically to deal with light swarms. 
If it is your opponent's battle phase and all monsters you controlled at the start of this battle phase, minimum two, have been destroyed by battle into the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. If summoned this way, choose an attribute and destroy all face up, at face up monsters with that attribute. Your opponent cannot special normal or special summon monsters with that attribute. So it pops itself if you pop the field, but like still, it's decent enough where getting it out and using it against Light Swarms can be fairly powerful. Uh, then we have Wolf. Wolf is weird because it cannot n be normal or set. Must be special, special summoned by a card effect. And if this card is sent to your deck to, from your deck to the graveyard, you can special summon it. There we go. It's a pretty good card. I would say that it's not like too bad as even in your hand because you have stuff like soul recharge and other discard effects uh then we have ba broken bamboo sword which is an equipment that does nothing uh, and golden bamboo sword which lets you draw two if you have gold if you have a broken bamboo sword so we have three copies of these uh, six copies total of dead cards because I, I i couldn't think of anything else to do and then we have three copies of polymerization for destiny and dragoon later solo recharge is a good draw power card surprisingly where you go um you draw two, uh, you discard one light swarm, you draw two cards, and then you mill two cards. This allows you to set up the graveyard for maybe getting Wolf out or even getting Judgment Dragon out eventually. Uh, Destruction Jammer has the effect of discard one card and negate an activation of a spell card or trap card or a monster uh, effect monster's effect that destroys a monster's on the field and destroys a target card. So this is here for Judgment Dragon because Judgment Dragon is a really scary ass card. So. Uh, Limit Reverse. Limit Reverse is a reanimation card that targets one monster with 1,000 or less attack in your graveyard and special summon it in attack position. If the target is changed to defense position, destroy it and, and destroy it and discard. When this card leaves the field, <laughs> destroy the target. When the target is destroyed, destroy this card. Uh, summon Limit. Summon Limit is a pretty good card that maybe prevents your opponent from flooding the field. Neither player can special uh, summon more than two times per turn. And then we have... Vanquishing Light, which has the effect of when a monster would be summoned, should be one Light Swarm monster, negate that summon, and if you do, destroy that monster. And our side deck is literally whatever. We have a Ribbon of Rebirth, but uh, fuck that. Don't, don't even bother. Don't even bother, bother man. Uh, we have uh, the boss monsters. Like We have Plasma as the main deck boss monster, and Dogma as for like, fodder, but we have Destiny and Dragoon as the actual boss monster of the deck. It has the effect of... Uh, a fusion summon of this card can only be done with the above fusion materials. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls. Destroy that target. And if it was face up, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack it had on the field. And you cannot conduct your battle phase to turn, you activate this effect. Once per turn, during your standby phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish one Destiny Hero card from your graveyard and special summon this card. So this card would be legitimately good in an actual Destiny Hero deck. But we don't have actual Destiny Heroes in this deck. We just have these two. So we basically get it out twice and that's it. But I, I, I'd imagine that this card would maybe win the game if it hits the board. Not against Judgment Dragon, maybe, because Judgment Dragon will probably just fucking wipe the floor with it. But we'll see. We'll see how this goes. But uh, anyway, that, 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 about, that about does it. So uh, anyway, good luck with the games. Welcome back, guys and gals. And here's what we're going to be playing for the finale of a GX. So I'm actually very excited about this. I've been looking forward to playing Lightsworn for quite a while because I think the strategy is just very interesting. So, as always, we'll go through the deck and uh, see what we're working with. So, you can, right off the bat, you can see that we are playing 58 cards. I just feel like uh, Lightsworn lends itself well to be playing just more things since you cycle through your deck. In theory, at least, you cycle through your deck very fast. So, I feel like we can be justified to play a few more cards because of that. But... Uh, first and foremost, we are playing three Judgment Dragon. It's the big boss. It's basically like the dad equivalent of this set, where uh, you, you spell summon it by having four or more Light Swan names, different Light Swan names in your graveyard, and you, you can pay none once per turn, a thousand life points to pop every other card in the field. And then in the end phase, it mills you for your for the top four of your deck. This is basically like what most of our uh, Light Swans are going to have. 
I think the uh, only exception is Wolf and the Tribute Munch. Yeah, okay. Celestia doesn't have it and Wolf doesn't have it, but Celestia does it when it's summoned. Same thing with Raikou on Flip. But everything else sends either 2 or 3, or Judgment Dragon sends 4, of your ca cards uh, to the grave. Basically mills them at the end of your turn. So I won't be pointing that out. Otherwise, uh, we're playing a single Gragonith. Uh, basically gains a uh, attack and defense boost for each Lightsworn name in your grave. And also inflicts piercing damage. So this is just a nice one of tribute monster to have. And additionally, if we ha happen to mill it, it's another... Um, what's his face? It's another... Uh, name that we have for a judgment dragon in our grave and also it is something that we can bring back with glorious illusion then uh, Celestia the other tribute monster this is what we don't want to be bring back with glorious illusion this is what we always want to be tribute summoning so when you tribute summon this card by tribute a lights for monster you a mill four and then you pop two cards your opponent controls so very good removal there wolf uh basically it's a garnet. It's something that you never want in your hand because from your hand you can't summon it. And instead, when it gets milled by any of the um, card effects, you then uh, special summon it from the graveyard. So hopefully, in most cases, it's just going to be a free body on the field. Jane 1800, big beat stick. It's 2100 when attacking an opponent's uh, monster. So just a good beat stick. Gareth at 1850, so pretty decent body there as well. And basically it gives you draws whenever you mill Lightsworn monsters and it amplifies all of your um, Lightsworn mills because for each, each instance you're additionally sending uh, two more and then this, this two more is what you get uh, draws for. Lila is our premier way of popping spell traps. So basically, if it's in attack position, you can change it to defense. You can change it back until the end of your next until you're like not next but the turn after but then you pop a spell trap with it uh lumina it gets some stuff back from the graveyard by discarding a card we can bring back a level four lower light storm from your from our grave which probably usually will be a wolf or a jane just to get like the biggest thing out unfortunately it doesn't hit dragon since it has to be specifically level four or lower but that's nice it can also get us back Aaron to deal with defensive monsters which we'll cover in a little bit argus basically just protects us from all sorts of effects because it protects all lights from monsters from targeting with card effects so basically like unless there's a field wipe like judgment dragon then argus will protect us uh, Aaron uh, deals with defensive monsters where if so if that attacks something that's in defense position before a damage calculation you shuffle the monster back into the deck Right, go just good card overall. Like it's a basically man eater bug that also mills you for three cards, but also it can pop back row as well. So just on flip, you pop a card in the field as well as send the top three from your deck to the grave. And then for the few non light sworn monsters that we are playing, we are playing three Guardian of Order. Uh, I just feel like our swarming capabilities are actually pretty good this time around since we have stuff like Glorious Illusion, which I guess I'll cover here. It's essentially just a Call of the Haunted for Light Swords that has a maintenance cost of two mils at the end phase. We also have Lumina to summon stuff back from our gray. We also have Wolves that we can get from any of our other Light Sworn effects. So uh, Guardian of Order, I feel like, is just going to be online a lot. Uh, are gonna force zero the fool this is basically just we set it and it's something that's immune to be destroyed by battle since it cannot be uh destroyed by battle and it cannot be changed to defense position except with a card effect but you can always just set it and then when your opponent attacks to it it just can sit there in defense and then finally we have three honest which is basically just a hand trap where if we have a monster that's in attack position and jeex that's something in attack position we honest jeex always loses the battle and takes damage equal to our monster's attack so honest is just very good it's also a 1900 body on the field which uh, gets bounced back to your in your main phase if you want to as long as it face up so it can actually be used as a defensive card as well as for the uh, uh, spell traps, we are not running too many. Uh, three Realm of Light, which is the Light Sworn uh, field spell. It just gives simple attack boosting. Uh, it gets counters every time a card is sent from your deck to the grave. And it also protects itself because you can, instead of it getting a pop, you can remove two counters from it. So uh, just a simple attack boosting for our archetype. And the other spells we are playing are three Solar Recharge. So you discard a Light Sworn monster to draw two and then mill two. 
already covered Glorious Illusion, which was just a Call of the Haunted. Then we have three Light Spiral. This is a little bit gimmicky. But I feel like in a potential like mirror, this might actually do so, do quite a bit of work. So each time a card is sent from your deck to a graveyard by the effect of lies from monster, you banish your opponent's top card in their deck. So there isn't really a way of getting stuff banished stuff back, and this can really because like if we are both both playing lies from, we're actually going through our decks quite uh, fast in an optimal scenario. So limiting Jesus resources this way might actually work out quite well. Three uh, Vanquishing Light, where a monster, if a monster would be summoned, you can tribute a light from a monster and negate the summon, and if you do destroy the monster. We can just do this if, uh, once again, like if Jeeks is on Light's point, if he tributes summon something on Celestia, that will pop our things anyway, or uh, dropping like some actual, absolute like nuke, like Judgment Dragon, obviously, or, uh, or even, uh, these are all here, we will we'll not be summoning them, but I wouldn't be surprised if a GX place uh, some sort of like uh, plasma dogma package because we were talking about this a little bit. Plasma actually just requires three monsters. Dogma needs uh, tributes, but plasma is actually something that could be played. So while like it's unlikely that something like Destiny and Dragoon would hit the field, something like plasma could actually hit the field. And uh, yeah, let's just say dealing with plasma would be a pain. So this can just be used to basically one for one. Well, I guess two for one. Anything that we deem too dangerous. And finally, we have three destruction gemmers just to, as sort of a catch all, where you discard a card and then it's a counter trap, where you negate the activation of a spell trap or a monster effect that destroys monster in the field and destroy it. As far as side effect, side effect, <laughs> side deck, we don't have much that I will probably end up citing. Like, Twilight is a gimmicky, kind of gimmicky. Uh, uh, hand trap almost that you can summon in your opponent's battle phase if they've destroyed a lot of your monsters but the only attribute that you'd really want to be summoning here would be or like using it in this set is light and we obviously don't want to pop our own things uh ishark basically just gets rid of things it, it destroys by battle but 2300 is okay it can deal with basically like anything that's not tribute summoned but then we don't care that much Jinzo just here, if we feel like uh, Jeeks back row is like better than ours and we would need to get rid of that. But we also have like some pretty good back row that probably we don't want to use this for. Um, Plus is FLO, basically just here to deal with if there's a lot of spell summoning going on. Obviously we have stuff like Guardian of Order, Lumina, Wolf, and Judgment Dragon. So whether we'd like to play this or not, I'm not sure. Arcane Force, uh, 11, 11, 14, sorry, Temperance, which is basically just another battle trap that can help us with battle damage if we need it. Once again, like, I don't know where I would find pay for this. And finally, for a trend life ones, you can target one of your banished light monsters to add it back to your hand if something like Light Spiral up and these games get really grindy happens. But mostly our side deck is kind of whatever. But yeah. That is the deck that we're going to be playing today. And honestly, I'm pretty excited. Like I said, like I've been, I think last one is one of the archetypes that I've been looking forward to playing the most. Cause I kind of know how the deck plays. Like I know what it kind of does. I've never played it myself previously, but I've like, I've always been very interested in seeing how it plays out. And obviously GX era, GX something that's very close to both of our hearts since that's the era we grew up with. So, kind of melancholy seeing it go, but I'm very excited to also be entering 5Ds. But, yeah. That'll do for the uh, deck breakdown, though. Hopefully you enjoyed, and hopefully we can end off GX with a bang. And, uh, yeah, hopefully the games go well. So, uh, enjoy the matches, and I will see you all in the dueling zone. And ladies and lads, welcome back to another episode of the Historic Yu-Gi-Oh! Learning Journey. And it is the final episode of the GX era. So, Light of Destruction is what we're doing today. No Champion Pack since Champion Pack Game 6 was included last week. But yeah, uh, it is the final episode of the GX era. And next week we're going to be diving into 5Ds with Duelist Genesis, which is insane to think about. So, uh, GX, how are you feeling? I'm feeling like I can see the light. It's at the end of the tunnel. You could say it's a, 
the light of destruction for, for Yu Yu-Gi-Oh. It's... I think you had like something there before you tried to I, include I, destruction. And they were just like, yeah, but it's a... <laughs> no, I no. think if I tried hard enough or workshop that a little bit longer, I could have like incorporated the idea that Synchros were the thing that destroyed Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, and that could have worked. That that could have made it work, but yeah, like, but uh, we'll we'll give uh, today's intro a two out of five. You were okay. cooking with the light at the end of the tunnel, but then it was you know it was all downhill from there. But you could say I destroyed my chance. You did, and I will destroy your chance of winning at rock no, paper no. scissors because I definitely would like to go first this time around and get my oh. graveyard set up first. So yeah, uh. 58 cards for me and 50, sorry, 60 cards for you and your main deck. So that seems. What could this happen to me? Yeah. Only not, only three cards in your extra deck, huh? Mm -hmm. You actually tried to summon here. something from there? I wonder if I maybe, maybe have something that I can summon. Well, 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 that is something maybe it'll we'll spell. just have to see. Um. Anyways, you pass. I will start by firing off Realm of Light. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. No problem, man. And uh, then I will simply normal summon Arcus. The fuck is that guy? Not the flag and target lights for monsters anywhere with card effects. Oh my god. Anyways, then I will proceed to the end phase and we will uh, mill, mill two cards. Two. Judgment Dragon hey. and Glorious Illusion. Not what I want to be yes, seeing hey. going into my grave. And uh, wait, oh. each time a card is sent. Oh, okay, so Realm of Light is for the instant. So the, although it sent two cards, it's just one counter, right? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. What, how I figured it was. I go standby main. I will. Activate polymerization. A no way. Turn to one. send from my hand to the graveyard, Destiny Hero Holy Dogma. shit. And Destiny Hero Plasma. To special summon Destiny and Dragoon. The end of GX era, the final episode, and turn one, we are getting a Dragoon. What, what, okay, so uh, what does this do? Must be that you can uh, pop a monster, inflict damage to your party, build to you cannot conduct a battle. Okay, once be that you are standby, if this goes into your grave, you can vanish it just. All right, neat. Okay, so uh, honest. I wish to oh. no no honest. So oh. I go to a grave and I'm taking it's thirteen hundred souls, seventeen. Yeah, to and then the I go. Main phase two, and I'll set one card, and I'll pass. That was a pretty good turn one. Draw a standby main. So anyway, Judgment Dragon. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, I wish. Um, uh, solar Recharge. Uh, right go. Honest. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. I think it's big. it is big. I do think that this is what we will do. So I will uh, normal summon Lumina, the light spawn no. summoner. Then I will rank three play. Hmm. It's mm. Yeah, I will pitch for Lumina's effect this Gragonith. And oh, I yes. <laughs> very good card. <laughs> you uh, know how out. you know what I was uh Re well, it requires tributes, which, the, which is the big problem here. Yeah. And we'll get Arcus out of 
All right, great. And uh, it's so risky and so dumb and so stupid and so dumb. Oh. I think this is the one time when I might get into it. So I will special summon from my hand, Guardian of Order. Oh my god, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. And... Go for it, buddy. What's the punish? That's Raiko. I think I still look at a stun the bling a little bit. We'll go battle face. Yeah. If it's Raiko, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. I will attack your face down with <laughs> Guardian of Order. It's the Lady in White. Oh. Well, I'm yep. glad that I did that. Uh, then we'll proceed to main two. Uh, nothing here will go end phase and will meal two and then three. I think I'll do it like this. Actually, no, it doesn't matter. So I'll just mill five. And there is a, a, wolf, a wolf, which I will special summon. Also, yep. there was an Arcana for zero, Vanquishing Light, Light Spiral, and another Lumina. And a that's two instances. Fool. Don't worry, don't worry about it, dude. A fucking fool. Don't worry about it. And yeah, we'll put two counters on Realm of Light. And uh, then we will pass. Alrighty then, chat room. <laughs> Today on the agenda, we have Lila, the Light Sworn Sorceress. She's yep. a 1.7 thousand beat stick that gains 300 attack from the effect of Realm of Light. Yes. Thank you. I and, got you, man. Uh, because we are somewhat suspicious of cards that happen to be on the field currently, I am going to... Uh, I am going to... Uh, uh, I don't like that card. Not at all. This card is super scary to me. So... Uh, I don't know what you have in your deck, but based off the fact that you have uh, the Fool, I would assume you have the World. And I assume that that means that you're going to try to get the World out, and the World is kind of scary. No. I would like to go into... What would Dio say? Battle phase. And mm -hmm. I would like to attack into Lumina. Also, no, Realm of Light only gives attack, not defense. Yes. So. So, yes. loom it up, and I will take 300, 300, 700, sorry. I was counting um, the extra damages, and that was 300. So, yeah, I'll take 700 from that. Double check something. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I would like to attack the Arcus Light Swarm Druid as well. Yep, that's in defense, so nothing on that. It'll get destroyed. Yep. And then I go main phase two. Yep. And I cannot use this effect. Oh yeah, because you cannot conduct your to turn and catch. Yes, true, I would true. pop it otherwise, but I cannot. Yep. Then I go to main phase uh, to my end phase, and uh, I will mill three. Yep. Oh look at that! <laughs> and this oh, is oh, only oh. from my deck. Yep. So yep. solar recharge. Lumina and a golden bamboo sword. Just Interesting. Like I will I... go standby main. Huh. I mean, I think it is definitely the play. Uh, so we will tribute summon. Yep. With Wolf, a yep. Celestia. Yep. So I will. Then mill four. So there go uh, two Lilas, a Vanquishing Light, and Light Spiral. I'm just getting rid of all my back row, huh? And then we will uh, target up to two cards our opponent controls, which is going to be both of your monsters. Unfortunately, yep. we'll gonna have to deal with Dragoon once again. But we get another counter on Realm of Light, and uh, at least we get to poke you for so. Uh, 25, and then 27. Yep, yep, that's fine, that's fine. And, uh... Huh. 
We'll go main two. Wait, isn't it? Wait, it's 25 plus 27, so it's 52, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, for, for, I forgot. Yeah, because the yeah, Realm yeah, of Light yeah. boost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, because my math is bad, so I was like, uh, that seems right, but then I was like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, this one doesn't have a maintenance mill, so yeah, we'll just pass. And I would go into standby main. Uh, actually, in standby phase, I have to activate this. I yeah, will Dragoon. Banish from my graveyard Dogma to special summon Destiny and a Dragoon. Okay. Yep. I almost just banish it face down from my deck by accident. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, standby face, go into Lumina. Yep. Yep. And only one uh, target. Only one target. I mean, I guess you could hmm. get Lumina. But... I'm gonna discard my fossil dinot patchy to special summon Lila Light Swarm Sorceress in attack position. Yep, who is now 2100. Yep, that, that, that she do be, that she do be. And then I would like to go in to battle phase and declare an attack on this hoe. Yep, uh, nothing on that. She'll get destroyed and I'll take 300. Mm. And then I would like to attack on Guardian of Order, and I would like to activate Honest. Honest yep. So gain. I will take a thousand, and the Guardian yeah. is gone. And then no one effects point. on that. Yeah. Actually, is it? It's a thousand. Yeah. And then yeah, because uh, it's it gives equal to, to the yeah. opponents. Yeah. Yep. And then I'll take twenty one hundred. And then we go main phase and end phase, and we mill five, six, six. Yeah, both of them are five, right? Yeah. Seems pretty good. <laughs> oh, both of them are just and getting rid of so much like spell trap. All right, yeah, so yeah, substrate, broken bamboo sword is here, and destruction. I was thinking jammer. For some reason, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, substitute. I can use substitute to summon substitute, and I'll just do that. But <laughs> Lamel. All right. Ah. Uh... Well, we will uh, set a T pose and pass. What could that ever possibly be? be uh, I'm gonna activate Lila, by the way, to to pop your back row. Yep, that is a vanquishing light. And then I would like to activate Destiny and Dragoon's effect to pop your your monster. It I'm doesn't be... have to be face up. Yeah, I know. I'm just happen. thinking because... Uh, assuming you drew a monster, I'm dead. In which I case... I can't go into combat. Wait, it's... Oh, it's the entire battle phase. True. Nope. The reason why I'm specifically doing this is because... Well... Perfect. Assuming you don't draw a Judgment Dragon here... Yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing, because I, I was, like, thinking that, uh, uh, what are my outs in this situation? But, and now this definitely ju Judgment Dragon, since I have, what, one, two, three, four, five, six different Light Sworn names. Yeah. So, but yeah, uh, it'll get popped. It is a fool. Oh, another fool. Another fool. That's sad. And uh, then, let me just, let me just, yeah, I think one, two, three, four, yeah, you absolutely have enough. Uh, I think I'm gonna just, just, uh, uh, maybe just fucking scoop, that's what I should do, right? True, I think, just, I think Just so. give up, just go next. Just I don't know, I, I think uh, that's the play, honestly. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna... I discard my nimble musasabi to special summon lumina in defense and change this lumina to defense and then i'm gonna go to end phase i'm gonna mill now. yep gaming and that's a wolf and we get a wolf of course we get a wolf now a true alatin huh it's that, don't look at that card that that card's a tick against the light swarms because they're only light and all of your jammers are there all right
<clears throat> now. It's if, 1 in 39. Or, if well. the Egyptian gods are listening to me, I would like to will uh, to my hand from the top of my deck a judgment dragon to lay judgment so upon my enemies. I'm going to be so mad. Is it a TikTok clip? <laughs> uh, let's try again next game. Yeah! <laughs> uh, let's just say it wasn't a uh, Judgment Dragon, and since it was uh, something new, I figured I was dead anyway, so I'd rather not show it. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. Hiding, uh, hiding your hand. Hiding your power level. I see yeah, so, you know, sometimes you gotta hide your power level but yeah i'll uh, that was a fun game and uh Destiny I, like for dragoon game. hitting on turn one hitting the board on turn one for the final episode of g access it's poetic i i enjoyed that you know what else yeah like top deck the dogma oh uh, you love to see it that's why we go second baby the extra card of course yeah just just <laughs> yeah but yeah uh let's go aside for game two all right, and uh, let's go again. I still think I would like to go first. Okay. Assuming so that there's that not another Dragoon hitting the field should be good. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, uh, best of luck. Best of luck. I think we will try again with a Realm of Light. Well, I've seen this play before. Yeah. It's not a bad play. I also think uh, I would like to normal summon Arcus, the Light One Ruid. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, I would like to proceed to the end phase and uh, mill too. Hopefully, this isn't the sign for, of things to come. So, Aaron and Honest go to the grave. I, I can like guarantee that it is not a sign <laughs> of great things to come. I'm gonna set one card. I'm gonna set another card. I'm gonna pass. Huh, interesting. You have got to be fucking kidding me. What's up? Um, all right. Now, is that Raiko? Well, there's only one way to find out, right? I will normal summon a Jane. Jane! And Hell yeah. probably Lady in White. I still don't get over it. If it's 2.2k, yeah. I have Arcus on the field. There's no way you'd set Raiko in that position. I think it's going to be Lady in White. Uh, I will spell summon a Guardian of Order. We yeah. Anything on that? I would like to proceed to the battle phase. No. Uh, so let's proceed to the battle phase. And uh, assuming this is Lady in White, I'll swing into it Guardian of Order. Although even if it was Raikou, I think they'll still swing into Guardian would be the right play. Thanks. Oh, it's Thanks. a Momonga, it's, huh? It's a Musisabi. Oh, and I'm going to special Musisabi. summon two Musisabi to yep. my field. I sure wonder what this play would result into if I did not lose <laughs> yeah. both my Musasabis. Yeah, surely <laughs> you wouldn't bring out a certain destiny hero, right? <laughs> you... <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I, uh, maybe... who, who could have seen that coming? Oh. That is uh, crazy. Uh, anyways, we will punch Arcus into this thing for 500, 500. points of damage. And also, and, uh, you take 500 damage for each of these dice in battle. So. Uh, but this is just for... Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, I'll I'll just take the 1,000 here. And then, yeah, we'll swing Jane into the other for... What is it? Uh, 1,300? Is it 1,300? Oh, no, for, 14. Yeah, because well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. I can't count. Uh, yep. And uh, then we'll go main two. Anything on that? No. Nope. And uh, then we will mill. So we're milling... Two instances of two. So, full Aaron, solar recharge, and glorious illusion. So, two more counters on Realm of Light. Okay, I'll go standby, main. I will. Set. 
One card. I'll set I'll set this card and I'll set another card in place. Mm -hmm. All right, draw stand by main. Uh, hmm. That could be Raiko, but I still feel like since I have the monster advantage that I want to push for damage, so reasonable. We'll go straight to battle phase. Anything on that? No. And Guardian of Order into the set. Well, we're gonna destroy that. It's yep. Mill three. So uh, Guardian is the only thing you can pop. So yeah, it's gone. Yep. And you will well two Lady Whites and a summon limit. Huh. And then I lose four thousand six hundred. Yeah, because fifteen and then. Wait. No, this 20, is for no, a monster attack. 30, so yeah, twenty. So yeah, it's for thirty. Thirty-six, right? Yeah, it's 36 you lose. Yep. But yeah, uh, Arcus first, then Jane, because, you know. Yep. There we ah. go, main two, set a back row, and uh, mill another four. So a Judgment Dragon, Ooh. a Wolf, another Jane, and a second Honest. Don't like seeing that, but yeah, we do get oh, the Wolf. Don't, don't, don't like it. Uh, I think we're gonna go game three. Uh, you wanna know what the two cards in my hand were? Honest. Two wolves. Hell yeah, it, uh, it, it, it has to happen, but yeah, I don't think there's anything happen. I need to cite here either, so. Going first, baby. Yep. <laughs> it's time for tempo. Oh, is it time for tempo? Oh, it might be time for tempo. All right. Oh, yeah, baby. All that's, right. That's... Oh, Let's oh, discard this ball uh, from my in, hand. Oh. In response yep. to solar recharge, I will activate summon <laughs> limit. All right. This is to... Yeah, yeah two, probably gonna yeah, give me more than you, but you know. Yeah, probably with your Momonga thingies, but uh, there might That's be some working. shenanigans. It, it is Momonga. Shut up. So first we'll the sabi. first we will draw two, and then we will mill two. Another recharge as well as a Lila. Um, then we will. Activate a Realm of Light. Hell yeah. Because we gotta always have those. And, uh... Hmm. Is it greedy? Is it? It is greedy. Greed. Is good, but if that's the uh, Musa, yeah, I think we'll just follow suit and uh, set a humble T pose. And uh, actually, do I wanna? Yeah, actually, I think I'd rather Ooh. do this. So fossil dino, right? Yeah. Oh, and pass. I'll flip summon Lumina Ooh. to attack the Raiko. It is, in fact, a Raiko. But now the question is, uh, I'll throw the gray, but do I want to? I mean, popping the summon limit guarantees that it won't happen again. Whereas Lumina can just be like recursive. I can get Lumina back. There's uh, like reanimator effects in this, or reanimation effects in this. I actually limit. think I'll pop your unknown back row. Oh no, you're gonna pop my limit reverse. Ooh. <laughs> oh, I almost got you. Yeah, and then mm -hmm. I'll mill free. Bro, why is it always Judgment Dragon and Honest? <laughs> Honest Judgment Dragon and a back row. There is no way. And then I'll go in face and mill three. Mm -hmm. Pop 
Holy soul recharge in. Alrighty. I would have really liked to have that yarn for something to attack point. Hmm. I would have liked anything. I think I'm gonna lose this. Which is really sad considering how like heavy heavy I started off. Oh it's, it's... Yeah bro, your star was great. Uh but yeah, I will glorious illusion. And we'll yeah. get back my wolf. Are you sure you want to get back your wolf and not the card that has actual utility and actually f fulfills your deck's win con by milling cards? Yes. Okay. I would have got Lila. Uh, well, uh, let's just say that uh, two we, Lilas is we might more than one. We might have a Lumina. Oh, yeah, no. But then the question is still the same. <laughs> Because the uh, end result is the same, but it's like now uh, Lila doesn't get tied to the Glorious Illusion. It's basically mm. like what I want tied to Glorious Illusion. Anyways, uh, let's just say that hypothetically I would like to summon more, so uh, I would like to put Lila to defense yep. and pop summon limit, and then we'll yep. special summon a Guardian of Order. Yep. And... Uh, uh, yeah, let's just start wailing, I guess. Uh, I think... I mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's go battle phase. So... Wolf, Wolf over Lumina for uh, 1100. Yes, then, then Lumina for another 1100. And then F. Guardian of Order for 25. Then we'll go main 2 and we'll go end phase and all mill. Uh, three, three, yeah. And then this is two, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I will mill eight. But it is three instances. So there goes a wolf. So we'll get him back. And Glorious Illusion, Aaron, Lila, Guardian of Order, Vanquishing Light, and another Guardian of Order, as well as a Realm of Light. And three more counters on Realm. Back to you. Aha, I got oh my trump card. Ditch up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that, that'll do it. That'll do it. That'll do it. B bro, these might have been the most fun games that I at least mean, I've had. These that's, that's kind of copium, I must say. I, I have to say that these last two games were some of the worst games I've ever played of Yu Gi Oh! in my life. That's fair. It's just, you know. This deck is actually cohesive. You actually have place basically every single turn. You're actually doing things. Like Light Sword is such a cool archetype. Because it's like, it's mm -hmm. easy, but you can actually, like, you feel like you're doing something every turn. Like, I don't know. This archetype, like, thus far to me, this archetype, low key, feels like Pinnacle Yu Gi Oh! Like, thus far for okay. me. I'm gonna suggest something. Yeah. We have a rematch, but uh -huh. I play Phantom Darkness. Ooh. That that can be interesting. Honestly, you know what? These were fast. I'm I'm down to do that. We can play. Hell yeah. We can play another game. So yeah, let me quit out of this. Uh, that that actually be perfect because it's pitting the two best decks of five Ds, like excluding Gladiator Beasts. But like Dad versus Light Sworn. Yeah. That's interesting. That's cool. I like that. But yeah, let's do a single uh game. But yeah, let's let's do that. So to end off GX, uh we'll play Phantom Darkness against Light of Destruction. And uh this time actually pick your thing. Don't just go rock unless you're actually gonna go rock anyway. So uh what do, best what do you think I'm gonna pick? I think you're gonna go rock. You think I'm gonna go rock? Yeah, I, I think you will. I think you're expecting me to not go rock because the fact that you're saying that I'm gonna go no, rock. I, so like I genuinely, picked... genuinely, I think you're gonna go rock. That's why I did that, because that's like the same yeah. thing. But now, this is where the interesting thing is. Well, I only have one real answer to give you. Oh, I see. I see how it is. Yeah. Well, what you if do? I told you that after this, there's only one real answer I can give you? 
Oh, lightning strikes it's, three times, huh? It's just yeah. that easy. But yeah, to end off, GX will have one more run at it. So will dad Good be th the power of light? It's time to summon dad. To activate Allure of Darkness. Ooh. To banish from my hand. No, not, not, yeah, not, you not can draw first. To draw two and then banish from my hand. Doomsday Horror. Yep. And then I will uh, choose to normal summon Lone Fire Blossom. I should have done this first. And then I'm going to yeah, do you, Lone Fire. Thinned. Into Lone Fire. And, into Lone Fire. And then end it on in then, a Giga Plant. And a Giga Plant. You just plant. wanted to play Giga Plant again. Yeah, baby. It's, he's my boy. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's uh, I'm going to set one card and pass. All righty. Draw standby main. Uh, I should have totally used uh, Lone Fires first. Because if I hit a single Lone, lone Fire, that would have been such a big minus. Yeah, true. Uh, oh. All right, well, we'll start with from Flight. Why? How? <laughs> Are you playing three of these? Of course I'm playing. Are you kidding wow. me? And uh, then we will set. Uh, we will okay. set. Okay. And I think we'll set. Uh, um. Okay. Hmm. Huh. Am I gonna set the Raiko to pop the Giga Plan, or am I gonna not do that? Hmm. I think it's all worth it. Uh, we will normal summon Eren, Eren yeah. Jaeger, Eren, and oh, we'll bad. proceed to the end phase to mill three cards from our deck. Why does it have to be every time yeah. Judgment Dragon? Like, actually. Gaming. <laughs> what are the odds? That's such... So unlucky, man. So fucking Does unlucky. Does it be like, what, if we get three Judgment Dragons and three Honests? Yeah. That's kind of nuts. I'm gonna... Uh... <laughs> I'm gonna go Battleface. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna attack into the Aaron. Yep, Aaron is gone. I'm taking 700. Yep. I'm gonna go main phase two. I'm gonna normal summon. I'm gonna get a knight. Yep. And I'm going to send it to the graveyard from my deck. A dark monster. Specifically, I will be sending, um, I think. Mm -mm -mm. Another Armageddon Knight. There's, uh, there's one yeah. problem with this deck currently, and it's the fact that this is built for, like, playing the set. So I have yeah. three cards here that are not intended to be in the actual version of this deck. Mm -hmm. They should be DD Crows instead. Alrighty. Change that. Because they were meant to be like, oh, I'm going to catch you off guard in the yeah. game one. All right, uh, let's start by activating a Glorious Illusion. Yes. And I only have one valid target, so I will get Eren back. Yep. And I guess we'll put it there. Uh, then what we will do is we will uh, <laughs> flip up a Light Spiral. Yeah. And then we will uh, tribute summon a Celestia. Okay. And I would like to pop a Giga Plant and uh, this back row. That back row. Uh... So maybe it's cards. Yeah, this cards. Oh yeah, and I first I need to mill actually before I do that, so we'll mill four. 
bro, you know? why yeah. is it honest? Every time. And then I think... Light Spiral? Oh yeah, li yeah Light Spiral happens before. Yeah, it, true. It, it triggers here, but... I'm gonna respond with... Actually, yeah, I'm gonna respond with... Escape from the Dark Dimension. Yep. To special summon Doomsday Horror. Yep, and then you just position. get it in the grave. Yeah, and now... Uh, whatever spirals? you banish from, yeah. What Trigger? I think it's like whatever you banish from the top of your deck instead goes in your grave because. Oh yeah, I, I banish one card. Yeah. Yeah. Only one card. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, that goes in your grave when Doomsday yeah, goes to grave. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yep. And uh, then uh, I already added from of Light, so I guess we'll attempt to swing over this for eleven hundred. Yep. That's. Perfectly okay. Fortunately, that gives three. you three darks, but that is how it goes. And yeah, 1100 I mean, damage, assuming you're you have so. the thing. So it does. Oh, fuck, can this fucking Which thing? website please fix this shit? Why can't I use control A on that? But you have uh, the thing that lets you negate a summon. Oh, yeah, the card. Yeah. Uh, also, shouldn't Dark... I mean, it, I guess it doesn't matter. No. But, oh, wait, was it it's only monsters? Only Dark monsters. Oh, yeah, uh, then it doesn't matter. I guess that's good future-proofing on their part. Anyways, yep. uh, end phase, nothing happens. And uh, back to you. And you're like, oh, you had two cards in your hand. Would one of them be that already? You did dig too deeper with Allure, and obviously you thinned your stuff with Giga Plant and Lone Fire, so there's a chance. Stand by main. I'm going to yep. set one card, and I'm going to pass. Mm-hmm. Because anything else I do in this situation will risk my dad chance. Hmm. Oh, this is so kind of greedy. Oh, I, I've already forgotten. This is the problem with playing like set by set. I've already forgotten. It's been like a couple of weeks. I've already forgotten like what was in the set. Like, what, what would you want to set? Because, like, the... Obsidian Dragon. Yeah, Obsidian Dragon is the only one that I actually remember. I guess, like, this could just be you setting some shit, but, like, you wouldn't set a... Okay, uh, remind me, did we have a champion back with ba Phantom Darkness? No, and even if we did, it would only be in the side deck. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's... Actually, true. we did have, but that's only in the side deck. Okay, yeah, then that doesn't matter. I'm a little bit afraid of the what you have. It's like it's so greedy. It's so greedy. Like it's so beyond greedy. I wanna do it so bad. Screw it. I'm I'm gonna follow my heart. Alright, uh we will a normal summon. Lumina. We'll pitch for its effect a Vanquishing Light. <laughs> and this is why that it's is. kind of great, because, you know, I would like to have that for something else, but we will get... I mean, presumably Aaron. you have another one set right now, so you know, you're fine. And, because uh, if I was greedy, I wouldn't do this at all. And I just summon Lumina normally and maybe get... Arcus with him to protect my shit, but yeah, uh, we'll do this. Then we'll go battle phase. We'll swing Eren into this to shuffle it back into the deck. Yeah. Uh, do you get to see? No, you don't. Yeah, I don't think. Because it's, yeah, yeah, it's before yeah. damage calculation. That's good. So that gets shuffled back. Then we'll go for 1200 and 25. Then we'll go main two, we'll go end phase, and uh, we'll banish the top two of your deck, and I'll mill six. And we do get a wolf. So we'll go 
Wolf. And we also got rid of Destruction Gemmer, Gragonith, Graroth, Lumina, and a Fool. And two yep. more counters on this. What was it? Allure and uh, Graffer. Yep. All right. And then it's back to you. And there's the card that I did not want to be in the deck. I'm going to special summon Cyber Dragon. Oh, yep. Yeah. You can't get over it's... the two other things, but not Wolf or Celestia. Yeah. Mm. And my hand is empty, so that's kind of... I mean, it doesn't particularly matter that your hand is empty currently, because you can still kill me, right? Yeah, I mean, on board, it's like, if you don't find... Or Actually, activate yeah. Dark Eruption, I'll add to my hand Armageddon Knight. Mm -hmm. I will Normal Summon Armageddon Knight. Yep. I will That'll send do. to my graveyard... Uh, what exactly? A Dark Monster? destroyed it doesn't work in this case i'm gonna send to my graveyard i'm pretty sure i know what the last card in your hand is i it's, would assume it's... if it was i would be very happy oh but i'm afraid it's not because i can't do anything with it well then assuming actually yeah you're not gonna dead try it. here oh you're gonna crash oh, them I mean, I have to. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, because it's two. Yep. Yeah. They trade. And then this. Yep, and I take yeah. 100. That does get rid of get rid of all of my mailers, which is unfortunate. Yeah. But uh, we still have lethal on board. Hmm? Do I not? Actually, wait, I'm, oh, I'm like 200 off. That's 2.700, so that's 600. And, and that's 2.7k. Oh. Not 2.7k, it's 3.1k. <laughs> it's 100 I was off. just going to say, I think I'm literally 100. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, uh, my, I mean, my deck is like 70% monsters. But if I draw a wolf okay. here, I'm going to be so sad. Just draw wolf. Just draw right. Holy draw. shit! Uh, uh, special summon and guardian order. Uh, okay. Yeah. What was your background? Go again. Go again. Actually, uh, it's dark illusion. Gotcha. I, I want to change something real quick. Sure. I don't want to drag this out too long, but we can maybe play one more game. We can just leave yeah. the rambles that we usually have. We can just leave those out. But yeah, go yeah. ahead. I, I think, I think this is all already like fairly rambly enough in a way. So yeah, that, that's true. But like, I think this is like uh fitting for a gx finale anyway but yeah like overall like just the uh, end rambles the only thing that we want to mention is that so uh next time when we are entering entering uh dual genesis we will dual genesis dual genesis i can't remember which uh, it's Duelist Genesis. Yeah, Duelist Genesis. We will... We're, so we finally decided how we'll uh, do the Legacy Rule. So basically the way we'll do the Legacy Rule is we will... Uh, whenever there is a set where you get uh, Legacy Support, uh, obviously you have to have Legacy Support for the Argonaut that you want to play. Like, Jeeks can't just play Heroes every single episode mm -hmm. until the end of the series from now on. Uh, so do the... Archetype needs to get actual support in the uh, set, it's one. And the other is your main deck, side deck doesn't matter, but your main deck needs to be 50% cards from the newest stuff that we are highlighting there. So that's to avoid like just having uh, one or two cards that are new that you include and then I just play old staples. So, so yeah, that is how we will be doing it. I'll have a reminder text uh, next time uh, well, at the start of the episode, and then I'll have it included in the description going forward. But yeah, that's how we're doing things. But yeah, let's play one more game of Light of Destruction versus Fan of Darkness 2. One more game. Uh, Say goodbye to GX. <laughs> and you say, how do I always open with Realm of Light? Lonefire? Yep. I mean, I have 40 cards. And Lonefire yep. and Giga Play. Mm, yep. And pass. Uh, yep. Uh, hey, no way! Are you? Unfortunately, I will not be activating. 
Realm of Light this time around. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby! I it's time! time. So We're gonna special summon oh. Dark Greffer yep. by discarding from our hand Dark Arm Dragon. You're pitching Dark Arm? You are. Then I'm gonna crazy. discard from my hand. Actually, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me do this instead, okay? I mean, I figure, because, like, I don't. Okay. Dark Arm can't even. Yeah, it can't even be special summoned. Great. Oh, yep. Well, let me just do this first, and then let me decide what I want to do from here. Yeah, I'm just gonna banish this thing from my hand, and as as I was about to do earlier, I will I will discard Dad to special summon Greffer, Dark Greffer yep. and then I will discard Crow from my hand to discard from my hand, to send from my deck to the graveyard. Another thing, A and then summon Dad. And um, yes, that is exactly what we're gonna be doing. Yeah, that's that's a turn one. By the no, way, that's a, that's a turn one. Yeah. Jesus uh, Christ! I send Zerator actually because I don't want really want to draw him, and then I'm gonna special summon Dad. Yep. I am and going to, to spot my field. Banish DD Crow. I'm gonna banish Darklo Zerator to pop both of your on your field. Yep. Yep. And then I will normal summon Giga Plant, and I will special summon Lone Fire Blossom. Yep. And I think, I that's, it. think that's game. Uh, it's what 40, 52, 62, 69. Actually, no, it's 60, it's, it's 73. Yeah, you're 700 damage off. I mean, not like anything, is it 700 like, isn't it? Because, like, uh, it's, it seems to be 600. I'm off. taking 500, I'm taking yeah. 1700, I'm taking 2400, and I'm taking 2800. It's 600 off, yeah, not yeah, 600 off, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't think there's anything I can draw here. I mean, I can draw the Judgment Dragon, but that won't matter. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Was this the first time you drew Judgment Dragon in this game? Yeah, literally. That's. Yeah, that's the, like the every, that... every time milling Judgment Dragon and Honest is kind of funny, but still. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, like we said, Modern like... Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, so, yeah, go ahead. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh, baby. Yep, I'm pretty much. So, like, not... Not much left to say here, but like honestly, uh, so obviously uh, we didn't address this a lot. Like we addressed it a little bit when we were entering GX era, but like things weren't as fleshed out in the original Yu-Gi-Oh era so, uh, when we were entering, so we didn't really address that. But mm, now, actually, like leaving a era where you had like a very specific focus on like fusions again not focus but it was a big thing there uh and now we're next time going to be entering 5ds uh maybe a little bit of reason bias here for me but what was your favorite deck to uh play or i guess most memorable deck is better go oh which one joey structure deck uh, is that not <laughs> good memorable oh what, what do you mean? Not good memorable. Well, was it a good mem memory? I I think the Joey structure deck is the best, like the best thing that we've con or I've concocted as a playstyle. Like That's it was a enough, weird control deck. It felt like a deck you would see in draft that somebody mm -hmm. accidentally made, and they're like, "Oh, this works." Oh, yeah. Like using Penguin Soldiers, Magicians of Faith to basically control the board and keep getting your good cards back. Mm -hmm. It felt really satisfying, especially because you could just easily use multiple Penguin Soldiers to recur like multiple flip monsters. And because this format was so slow, it actually eventually outvalued the Pegasus deck, which was yeah. arguably the better deck. Bro, fuck Penguin Soldier, man. That was, yeah. that was a bastard. But yeah, like... There, are, there were, like, many archetypes that, like, I was familiar with. I had, like, previously, like, I, I never had had the chance of actually playing them. But Gladiator Beasts were a one, like, highlight to me. That I always, like, thought that I would like the archetype and to uh, play it. Obviously, later on, it gets even more support. It gets more fleshed out. We might see it. Yeah. Uh, come back out uh, then same thing with like ancient gears actually get fleshed out a little bit later they actually get a really good boss monster as well as like howitzer as like a good uh, setup 
tool as well, as well as something to do on their turn one. So those are like archetypes that get really cool, but I did not have many expectations for Lightsworn, but honestly, this was probably like, even with all the structure decks, we've always praised the structure decks a lot because it's just like, you actually have a cohesive tr strategy. I think this was my favorite deck thus far in the whole series to play, like legit. Mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting because I feel like Lightsworn, uh, Phantom Darkness, specifically the Nat build, and mm -hmm. Glad Beast, I think those three decks are the most cohesive sets we've had. Yeah, you know? definitely. Like, those three are, like, they're obviously the best archetypes in the entire, like, not archetypes really, because Dark isn't really an archetype, it's just broken. Yeah, but, <laughs> like, just the best chest tribute. It's just the best. But I would say that if we had a, like tournament quote-unquote against each of these decks like compare it to, them to each other i think they would all be super fun to play against each other yeah and against every other deck it would just feel like you're crushing them completely yeah i do agree that those are definitely like the outliers in terms of you just look at power and like uh not, not even like power okay like light Swan has like actually good swarming like with stuff like wolf and obviously judgment dragon is just a bomb that you can drop uh, same thing with kind of like uh, that, but like Glad Beast and uh, Glad Beast in specific, uh, or specifically like Glad Beast are also like in that feel of like those like decks are just like they feel so much more consistent than anything else. Yeah. That's the thing because like early on, like consistency is hard to find. And I feel yeah, like I think these decks are Glad like, Beasts. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying, like, I feel like these decks are definitely like. Or far above the rest in terms of like just consistency especially i think glad beasts are the outlier even in that regard because mm -hmm. the fact that they have the ability to tutor out everything and they can yeah. play one-offs of everything and that's really interesting because imagine you have a deck consisting of like 15 different cards that all have different utility that you can go into at any point you yeah, want yeah whenever you need as, all, and, as long as you just survive the battle yeah and that, that's super that cool well. Yeah, it's That's... it's a really cool archetype. Like I think, like uh, okay, most interesting deck aside, like what about you? Because now we're actually like looking at uh, since we are mo mostly focusing usually on archetypes. So what were like your favorite archetypes that were introduced? Because like for me, it definitely is like Glad Beast. I knew I would like, and I still like definitely liked it. Ancient Gear, I am more of a fan. A little bit later on, when it actually gets fleshed out. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, really? Uh, okay, uh, you can't say hero, because everybody knows hero, but what if you can't say hero? What would be your other one? Because, like... If I can't say hero... Yeah. I mean, I think... Arm Dragon actually is... Well, Arm Dragon isn't even GX. It's it's the, the, the horse set, isn't it? Yeah, never mind. I, I think... Ojamas are pretty fucking cool. I think Ojamas are super fun in terms of what they've done with them. They're, I look like kind of like, yeah, I look <laughs> kind of like the way they later just make it a mash of all of Chaz's stuff. It's like yeah, you've, you know, yeah. Uh, arm dragons and like the A B no the X Y Z thing. Like bro, just make them support cards for that. I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. I, I think the Chaz archetype is yeah super cool. I like it a lot. I, like I wish. It. I wish they made Bastion into something because Bastion doesn't have anything yeah, even now. You have Hydro get on Oxygen, and then you have the shitty Water Dragon. That's no one has ever summoned a Water Dragon. No, no one has ever summoned. I like. I assure you, like people know Hydro get on, and they don't even know that it's like this mini three card archetype. Okay, a four card because you also have the back row to actually summon it. But it's like, yeah. it's like Oxygen on and Water Dragon. Like, what the fuck are those? Hydro get on. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. of course I know that. It's a good swapping card. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I'm not sure really. I feel like ignoring heroes. The one archetype of these that I had never played mm -hmm. is glad beasts. Mm -hmm. Like I've always looked at glad beasts and be like, I don't want to play that. I don't like that. But I feel like glad beasts is probably the outlier to me. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I liked it the most out of the archetypes that I had not played up until now. Yeah. Uh, and beyond like glad beasts, I didn't really play any archetypes. Yeah. Before that. Yeah, that's fair. But like, Glad Beast, I just saw the playstyle, so like the design just and just based on that, like I was like, I'm probably gonna like this. But like, yeah, Lightsworn, I was interested mostly just because like playstyle seemed cool to me. But 
I had no experience with the archetype itself, and that was like a, this was definitely a very pleasant surprise for me, like, for sure. Like, I did not expect it to it, to like it as much as I did. I mean, hell, I genuinely think, like, this was the most fun deck to play out of literally everything we, like, at least I played during these 35, by the way, episodes. 35. Ah, we've but yeah. been doing this for like a year. Almost. Yeah, we we gotta figure something out. We'll probably like we discussed it a little bit already. Like it, it's it's still a long ways. It's still months months to go. But we discuss a little bit that we probably want to do something because this is something that we would like to definitely like keep on going. So like something like a anniversary episode, like every fifty episode would be fun. But like we don't really know like what that could entail yet. We'll figure that out when we get closer to it but also if there are any ideas like be sure to let us know but uh also yeah yeah we want we'll play extra games we won't ramble right smile smile <laughs> but no i mean i think it's fun yeah i, I, I think, think having so a little bit longer of an episode for the finale of gx is really good yeah i we didn't really agree. acknowledge the end of dual monsters yeah that's the thing that we basically just were like we were just so hyped to get into gx because like i mean uh, I feel like that was, like, both of our, like, the actual Yu-Gi-Oh! era that we remember from our childhood. Like, that's that's what I watched on the television on Saturday morning cartoons. It was GX. And, the, I mean, bro, you know you know what? Like, where, where where's the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX finish team? I, I gotta play it for the finale. You already know. Same. So, uh... We'll, we'll let the whole one minute thing play out here, but I just, I just want to say thank you thus far for being here. And yeah, like Jig said, sorry that we didn't really acknowledge the end of Duel Monster. We were just so excited to get into GX since it's the era that's like the closest to our hearts. Definitely because of how, when we grew up, so hope you understand. But this was definitely like a, I think this was a great episode to end the GX era for sure. Like from the Dragoon hitting the field on literally turn one to us like actually like revisiting the light versus dark sort of theming. I think overall it was just like a really fun episode, like all things considered. So, and yeah. honestly, I think one of, even with like the first, uh, the couple of games being pretty one-sided i still like like overall uh, this ended up being like actually one of our best episodes yet i would think so yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree that i think most of these set, like most of the sets leading up to the end of gx ignoring the Venom set that we played i think <laughs> these are really fun yeah that that never happened we do not that talk never about happened the yeah, Venom true, true, true. like actually bro what the and fuck was that i think I summoned Thunder Giant in one of the first few sets, mm -hmm. so book ending GX with another fusion, that's yeah. action. Like, the fact that I summoned Thunder Giant back in, like, early GX, and now I summoned Destiny and Dragoon. Or was it, like, also see Wingman? Or was it Thunder Giant? No, no, I'm pretty sure it was Thunder Giant. I, I summoned Thunder Giant, and I used it to pop something, and then you killed it with, like, Hammer Shot or something. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. it. I think I remember that, too. Yeah. And yeah, that, I, it's, I think it's, it's poetic. Yeah, the fact that I also went from summoning a bad card that can't summon itself back that has a pop effect to summoning a good card that's hard to summon that has a recursive effect to itself. It's, it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. I think it showcases the power level of fusions going up as well. Yeah, and also like the fact that it's just like, okay, one of Jaden's ace monsters into like, uh, like a Destiny and Dragoon ending the GX uh. era is like... It's overall like it's it writes a nice chapter, but yeah, we don't have to be too melancholic for it so long though, because I think like entering five days is gonna be interesting. So like uh, synchros to me to the okay pendulums are a different thing, but like synchros are still a very like foreign uh, card type for me. Like I haven't basically like ever really played much with synchros because like the modern Yu-Gi-Oh deck that I've played is Galaxy Eyes, which plays. A little bit of links and mostly exist so like uh, still to this day like synchros are a pretty foreign for a for gonna be for, for me yeah. so yeah it'll be very interesting to see and i feel like uh this is uh, like 5d is also gonna be when deck building is getting gonna get like 
harder for sure significantly so because like you actually have to account for okay synchros are actually going to hit the field uh, what tuners do i want to play uh is the effect good enough to warrant playing it just because i actually want the level to be able to summon the synchro so i feel like it's going to be harder which is already like that's hard because i'm not good at deck building which is why i gravitate towards archetypes so but it, it will definitely be interesting for sure i agree but yeah for me Synchros are something that I've all like always played ever since I came back to the game after mm -hmm. like being a kid. I played Plants back in like 2012, uh, yeah, 2011. Yeah, get Plants Synchro. Yeah, I I played Plants with Dad in there with BLS with Effect Veiler with Honest, oh, and yeah. I had like two Dark Monsters in the entire deck and three Light Monsters, some in BLS and Dad. <laughs> I don't even know how I got Dad out ever, but you know, I did it somehow. Did you just slap everything like cool in there? Just put every single good card in your deck and the Turia Cherries and Quick Draw Synchron and Unknown Synchron. So, oh, actually, I had three. I had a uh, Unknown Synchron, Double Warrior, and Junk Synchron for Darks. Yeah, oh. That explains it. But I, I'm i really excited to see how 5Ds pro pro progresses. Because yeah. I only know how 5Ds is at the end. I don't know how it is at all in the beginning. Oh, yeah. I, for me, it's the complete opposite. Like, I know basically nothing of 5Ds. I basically, like, my knowledge of 5Ds is the Signer Dragons, which come out, like, uh, towards the uh, pretty start. Like, so, uh, Stardust, like, Red Rose, Archfiend, uh, Ancient Fairy, everything like that. I think it's pretty early in the 5Ds era. But apart from that, like, I, I know very little. So it'll definitely be very interesting. It'll be interesting to foray into uh, sort of the unknown for like basically both of us, where it's like we know every most of the cards that you actually see are gonna be like new cards. I feel like it's like I feel like I'm... here like for most of us, it's like oh I have this or oh I had this card at some point and I've seen this before. So I'm gonna have to beg to differ on oh. all the cards being new because a lot of the cards that you see in the beginning of GX are cards that you also saw in like 5Ds, because they were still some of the best, uh, not 5Ds, yeah, sure. uh, in Zeal. Yeah, For sure. example, Junk Synchron, Doppel Warrior, Quick Draw Synchron, Unknown Synchron, Cherries, and so on and so forth. Yeah, sure. Although Cherries are from Hidden Arsenal. Yeah. So. Which also we will tackle that in one way or another. We've been talking about Hidden Arsenal and Dual Terminal and stuff like that. We'll, we'll do it some way, but we'll, we'll figure that out. A little bit closer but yeah what i can say is uh also uh we will do a zombie world structure uh the initial 5d starter deck is pretty boring and there's a 2009 starter deck 5d starter deck variant which is very similar but uh, overall just like more interesting and a little bit better version of that and zombie world is actually a pretty decent structure deck so even though it's from an old era at that point i uh, will probably do at least dual genesis and probably another set of 5ds and then we'll do probably uh zombie world against the 5d struct uh, starter deck which will be interesting because it'll be the first time when we're actually doing a starter deck versus a structure deck but one is obviously from another era so it'll have more uh, power in that way but the other is actually a cohesive deck so that'll be interesting but uh, we haven't forgotten about zombie world we're just been looking for a situation where we can logically make it happen so look forward to that in the future but yeah this was a fun episode as always uh, it was a nice way to end off a gx like we said and uh yeah, but I don't think I have anything here to say. So unless you have something to say, Jeeks, we'll see you all next time in 5Ds. Um, game on. <laughs> game on, gamers. So yeah, uh, thank you as always for watching so much. And uh, we will uh, see you, like we said, in Duelist Genesis next week to enter the era of the Synchro. So have a good one, y'all, and see you there. Peace.